Welcome. I have um, two questions. Um, one is a little more serious than the other. Um, Nothing serious going on here. <laughs> Good. Ever. I just would like your point of view on something. Um, if you agree, we've all sort of existed before and always will exist. Yes. So this is a religious question. I would like to know why Jesus came if we always was and always will be. Same reason you did. Same reason you all do. In other words, no one comes. Why did, what's in your mind? Why do you think? In other words, do you think that... What could, what could possibly be the reason that anyone would come other than that you are eternal beings and you've come for the creative experience? So are you saying Christ came for the experience as well? Of course. Of course, there are no exceptions. It just seemed sort of a dramatic way to help us out. Well, it hasn't been that helpful, actually. <laughs> More people die over the, the things that surround Christianity than all other things put together. Correct. Correct. So, we know what you mean. You, well, what do you mean? <laughs> the helping out part. The, well, what I mean is, if, if we will always exist, why the intervention? Well, First of all, there never is any intervention. Intervention sounds like assertion, and there is no assertion. There's only attraction. So what happens is you're taking a historical figure who has rightly earned the place of a religious figure. There are many who feel that it's blasphemy to call him anything other than the Son of God, and so we will. But we will not call Jesus the Son of God in any other context than that we put you in the same category. In other words, everyone who comes forth is an extension of source energy. And everyone comes forth to explore the contrast and to become. And his story is not different. In other words, he came, like all, did his part of banging around, put all kinds of things into his vortex, even though he wasn't calling it that in those days, separated himself from the trauma and the struggle, came into alignment with who he had become, and then stood in that vibration of greater knowing that he had carved out of this life experience, and then told the story of that. And others who were witnessing hardly anybody ever coming into alignment with who they are then pronounced him unique and marvelous and king and God and saint and son of God when what he was was just a regular guy tuning into who he was and teaching through the clarity of his example that everyone else could do the same thing. And he said that every day, every day that people would listen to him. That's the story that he told. He said, I am not that which you are not. He said, is your faith that makes you whole. He said, come into the vortex, come into the light. He said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. In other words, everything that he said was about, I am an eternal being and so are you. And maybe there was some of, and I will show you the way. But not one time ever, and it's a distortion if you're hearing it today, did he ever say or mean to imply, I will come forth and do for you what I see you cannot do for yourself. Because it defies all laws of the universe and it cannot be. Very good. I have, I have one other question. It's, <laughs> it's, it's on a humorous side. Um, and then humans take the part of his story when he was the most out of the vortex, when he was saying, why have you forsaken me? And that's the part of his life story that they dramatize the most. 
It is the last part that he wants you to remember. He would like you to remember when he was in alignment. He would like you to remember when he was in vibrational alignment with well-being and could hold you as his object of attention. And even though your body was dripping illness, he did not see it. And so wellness was the only thing that you could experience when you were in the presence of his aligned state of being. That's the part he would like you to talk about, you see. He would like you to remember that you are born as liquid love, that you are pure positive energy, and that when you hold yourself in an attitude of hate, you separate yourself from all that is good and all that you want that's the part that he would like you to remember you see he does not want you to remember the day he was out of the vortex and they hammered him up <laughs> nor does he want you to push against that nor does he want you to make those your enemy nor does he want you to stand in martyrdom against others and make anyone your enemy you see well put well put thank you